Hi, I'm Chuck Cassidy. Thanks for tuning in. I've been building school buses for the last eight years, but today I'm working on something a little different. A van. I'm here with another Charlie. And uh, this is Charlie from Lost Renegades. If you don't follow him, you should. So go find him and I'll link to it in the, the dealy do. Uh, but today, they're in the shop. They live in their van full time. And uh, it's time for some upgrades. And luckily we had a narrow window where we could squeeze them in and get some work done on their van. So Charlie, what is it that we're doing on your rig today? Uh, so we're putting a 20 gallon fresh water tank underneath the van. Epic. And because I failed to document this when I did it on my bus, it's already done, I will be showing you all how we mount tanks under buses. And while this is a fresh tank, uh, this is applied for a great tank, or really any other square plastic tank that you're trying to stick under your rig. Thanks for tuning in. Let's get to work. Mounting a gray water tank can be a little bit of an intimidating job if you don't know what you're shooting for, how to approach it. So I'm gonna real quick go over what our method is here that we use at the shop. We've been doing it this way for years with great results. Uh, I'll show you a sample of one that's already been done. And then uh, I'm gonna get to work making lots of measurements, lots of cuts. And once I have it all glued back together, I'll show you what we've got. But I'll bring you in here. This is the tank that we're using. It's a 20 gallon tank and we're gonna be tucking it up underneath this van. The way we typically do this is we will build two frames, one around the top of the tank and one around the bottom of the tank that the tank will rest on. And then we'll use flat steel drops from the top frame to the bottom frame that will then bolt into it and suspend the tank in place. Let me bring you in and show you exactly what I'm talking about. So I'll be cutting in mitering corners that will run from here to there, and all around the top. We'll do the same at the bottom, and I'm gonna to have to get a little fancy with this tank, and then I'll use a piece of flat steel sheet to create a bottom and protect the bottom of the tank. And what we're going for is something that'll be like this, and this is the tank for my bus. As you can see, it sits in a frame, that's a piece of metal there, and we'll go ahead and tuck a heat pad under both of these tanks. And then my steel drops from the top frame, we'll have the same frame around the top, will come down and then they will through bolt into this hole. So once that's all made and in place, we'll take the top frame, bolt it up underneath the van right there. And then we'll know that this tank can just sit on its frame, get lifted up and get bolted into place. And Charlie actually already went ahead and ran some wires to the heating pad that we'll put on a switch for him. And since this is a fresh tank, he also went ahead and drilled a hole uh, in the floor beneath their kitchen sink where their uh, jugs used to be. And we will run a line of PEX and we'll put some protective uh, sheathing on it up and inside so that the pump can draw water out of their tank. Hope that makes sense. If it doesn't, it will. Let's get started working.
I've got the top frame pieces all cut. I've got my little notch here for what's gonna become the vent on the tank. And I'm gonna go ahead and weld these up. Once I have the top frame done, I'm gonna flip this tank over and get going on the bottom side, which will be a little more involved, um, but nothing too crazy. And once those are done, then I can get ready and size the drops that'll go down the sides and hold them together. Uh, once I have those welded on, I'll cut out a sheet of steel for the bottom plate, get this all zipped up, welded, ground smooth, and get a coat of paint on it so that we can get this installed tomorrow and have this job wrapped up in two days. Test fit looks good, so I'm gonna go ahead and just zip up the rest of these welds and get started on the base. I'm getting my pieces cut for the bottom of this tank, and here's a little pro tip for you. Make sure you put a fat little bevel on your edges there so that when you go to weld this up, you've got a place for your bead to rest. A little tip there, because you don't really want to be welding on the inside where the tank's gonna rest, or you're gonna have to grind it perfectly flat. It's tough to get in there with your angle grinder. So if you do it this way, you can just weld one side, get a nice solid weld with good penetration and save yourself a step of angle grinding on the inside. Little pro tip. Got the tank, it's upside down. If you couldn't tell, this is the bottom. So it's resting in the bottom there. And uh, I'm just gonna, you know, start tackling this. Um, I think what I'm gonna do is start up here. I'll put in this piece make you know a piece that comes out to here same on that side and then just kind of work my way down just kind of doing it all in place as I go and then you know we'll put it together everything will look nice okay so you've seen me making cuts on that noisy cold cut saw back there we just leave that set up for miters because <clears throat> well it's easy I want to show you my preferred way to cut metal and that is with a horizontal bandsaw. Take a look at this guy. I mean, just look at this thing. No drama, everything's chill. And just listen to how much quieter this thing is when it's doing the thing. I'm just squaring off the edge here. This is an off cut from a mitered piece. It was cut wrong. Throw the clamp down and let it rip. Isn't that nice? Low drama, very chill. <clears throat> and this thing, it's good on blades, I'll tell you. It, it barely uses them. I think we've replaced this blade twice in two years. We cut a lot of steel on it too. Just like that.
All right, I've got the bottom done. Hopefully things are starting to kind of make sense to you. What's going on here? Had to get a little creative. Um, since this is the bottom, that's where the water will come out. And because it's got this little ridge here, uh, it just so happened that I was able to weld in a piece of one inch angle and that just took care of that. So what we're gonna do next is we're gonna take these little tabs here and uh, weld them on flush with the edge, probably there. And then probably another one, I don't know, somewhere like that and weld those guys on. And then I'm gonna take some inch and a half flat steel and run it from here up to that, drill a hole through it and that'll get bolted. And because this is the top and this is gonna be um, bolted onto the underside of the van, these drops will be super securely attached. So to install a tank, you put the tank in this bottom tray, jack it up until these holes line up and then put your bolt through it. I uh, hope it's kind of starting to make sense. If it doesn't, I promise it will soon. So I'm just gonna measure in, make some marks where I want this, get these welded on, and uh, it'll be time to weld on, cut and weld on those flats. How about eight inches? All right, let those welds cool down a little bit and uh, go ahead and put the tank on this guy. It's getting heavier by the second. Okay, so now we are, we're in. And uh, I'm not sure if you can see. So now I'm gonna be taking some pieces of flat, welding them here that'll drop down and catch our little uh, attachment points there. So I'm gonna go ahead and measure that, get those pieces cut, weld them on, drill the holes, and then I think we're done with the fabrication part of this project. Go ahead and drill these holes for our bolts, and I think we'll be done. Okay. So I hope you can kind of see what's going on here. These, I'll finish up these welds here once I take it all apart again, but we've got our straps welded to our top frame. And then right down here, they get bolted onto those little feet that we added. And that's what captures the lower frame and supports our tank. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna go ahead and disassemble this. I'm gonna finish up these welds here and there. And then I'm going to go ahead and get this primed and painted for tomorrow. And if you recall, there is going to be a, a little piece of sheet metal that we're going to put in the bottom. Um, that's going to get glued down, actually. We don't want to, if we weld it, there's going to be areas that could rust, yada, yada. It's not even structural. It's really just to protect the tank from rocks and stuff. So we will glue the sheet metal down tomorrow when we go to install this guy. Okay, welcome back. Day number two of our tank install for Lost Renegades. The paint is dried, looks nice. What I'm gonna be doing this morning is uh, cutting some sheets of 18 gauge galvanil that we have laying around here to make our bottom for this. It's not gonna be actually holding the tank up. The tank is held up by the frame. It's really just there as a shield to protect the tank and to protect the heater pad that we'll be installing as well. So I'm gonna get started with that um, and it gives me an opportunity to show you one of my favorite metal working tools. Cutting sheet metal, not my favorite job to be honest with you. And a lot of folks will put, you know, one of these, a cutoff wheel on an angle grinder and go to town. And I am always looking for a reason not to use an angle grinder 
and not to use abrasives. And by abrasives, I mean these style of cutoff wheels, flapper discs, anything like that. It makes tons of dust. They're dangerous. <laughs> so we use this. These are from uh, Harbor Freight, actually. They're like 40 bucks. They're maybe not the best electric shears in the world, but for the price, it's hard to beat them. And they come with that 90 day Harbor Freight warranty. So we always have two because you never know when one's going to break. But uh, I don't know if you can see there, those little jaws go back and forth and they just munch their way through the steel. No sparks, it's very quiet. No cutoff wheels to break and cut your aorta and leave you bleeding out on the shop floor. So that's what I'll be using. I'm gonna go, well, I'm gonna take some measurements, grab some scraps of sheet steel and get cutting. So if you look here, the head of this, you'll see there's these three kind of jaws and this, the middle one is what moves. Okay. When you cut your line, what you want to do is you want to line up the teeth so that they're on one side of the jaw like that. And then you'll cut down that line and have yourself a really nice piece of steel. And what it does too, it makes these cute little pigtails. Check this out. There you go, clean edge. It's really actually not even that sharp, which is a nice change of pace. Anyone using a cutoff wheel. So we'll knock this long cut out and call it a day on this. I hope you can see why I love these things so much. It took no time at all, and it would have been disgusting, messy, and dangerous to do it any other way. So, there you go. All right, time to glue down our cut sheets here. And uh, today's flavor is gonna be uh, some Sika Flex 221. Um, you know, whatever you got laying around, it's, this isn't gonna go anywhere. <laughs> So, I'm not terribly concerned about this, but it's a nice thing to do, you know. Just go ahead and get it glued in. Used tube. Pull that little plug out. Look at that. It's kind of like picking your nose. Mmm. Mmm, mmm, mmm. Oh, it's white today. That's fun. That's fun. So the reason I have not painted that galvanized steel yet, but I did paint this whole frame, is because I wanted to have all of these metal surfaces covered in paint. And once we get this glued down, I'm going to go ahead and throw a coat of primer just on the top of this. It's galvanized, so I'm not really worried about anything happening to it. Uh, you know, paint is far inferior to galvanizing. And let's see what we got here. Mm, mm, mm. That's great. Look, no complaints there. On to the next. All right, so this is the upper half of our mount. And the next step in installing this tank is while that primer dries, take this upper half and we're gonna go get under the van 
and get this thing set in place. We're gonna have to make some standoffs or spacers um, to get it to clear some bolt heads and stuff. And uh, drill the holes, get this bolted up, and then once this is in place, we'll be able to fit the tank. So I wanna show you what's going on under here and how we're gonna be mounting this tank. So the tank is gonna go right here. That's our line that Charlie already ran that's gonna to connect to the heat pad. This um, panel is actually covering, I think it's the ABS pump, that's what it looks like to me. But I had to cut it back because we need to get access to this rail here. So I cut that back there. And what I'm gonna be doing, hopefully, <laughs> is making some spacers about probably right around an inch to go where all of our bolt holes will be so the tank drops down low enough to clear these bolts and that and then if we look to the back here this little flange right here and that flange sticks out about an inch so we want to bolt into to these two points here these two here and then if we can sneak in a couple more up front that would be ideal now this is a van so this would be applicable if you're doing a short bus, but why don't we go around the shop and I'll show you how we did it on my bus, which is more like a, you know, school bus. So you can see what we go for here. This will give you some ideas. Now, if you remember earlier, I showed you the bottom half of that tank as it was sitting on the bench. And look, you can see those drops that we've got installed here on the back of my bus. And yes, I know it does hang down low, but that's because this bus, my bus, actually has a very, it's got a short, we call this part a skirt. Normally this part will hang down a little lower, but anyway, so come under here and you can see it's a little dirty, but we've actually got this frame bolted and it bolts up through these um, flanges here. Okay, so I hope that makes sense. And then these are the drops that hold the tank on. So that's how you would do it on a, on a normal schoolie. Feel free to copy this idea. <laughs> I'm sure it's been thought of before. Hey, look, it's that trailer hitch we did. All right, so we're under here. I got this guy clamped in place with a million clamps. And originally I was gonna just cut some spacers, almost like uh, pieces of tube to space this down. And then I decided I think I'd rather weld a piece of one by two inch uh, steel tube across here so I can bolt it to this uh, frame rail here. So a little more welding and painting, but whatever. I went ahead and marked where I want to have my holes for my bolts. Give me an arrow so I know which way is to the outside. And I'm going to index on here so I know where to weld it on. And then, oops, <laughs> same story down on this end, although it's a little more special because Remember that uh, the bolts that hold on that uh, ABS antelic brake pump, well, they're in the way. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to drill holes through, it'll be through this side of the steel so that this piece can then slide to the left here and sit flat across there when I bolt it to the cross member that comes across. Hope that makes sense. I'm gonna get this marked up and then hopefully get this uh, welded on so the paint can dry over lunch and then just come bolt this tank on. All right, so you just saw me drill a couple of holes in this piece of steel, big holes on this back side, and that's to clear the heads of the bolts that you see there. So I was able to put this now flush up against that. With that in place, I'm able to mark where I'm gonna be drilling my bolt holes for screwing in, for bolting through this flange. So I got it there, and then I'm also marked here where it says CB. I call it counter boring because we're gonna drill a big hole on the outside so that the head of our bolt can recess in and then a small hole through the other. So you'll, you'll get it, you'll see what I'm saying. 
and I got everything marked up under here. So I'm about to just take this all apart, drop it down, drill my holes and weld everything back together and cross our fingers that everything works. Those are those holes that I bored out so that the, uh, the bolts that hold that ABS pump mounting plate would clear. And that's gonna get welded on there. Hit this with primer and paint real quick. Eat some lunch. And then after lunch, this can go up. Just a little, you know, extra hour of stuff. But this'll, this is a lot stronger than I think doing the spacers that I was thinking about earlier. All right, for the last time before we go up, for the last time. So it's all welded in now. These are welded together. Those are the counterboards you see so that I can get to the bolt head or the, the nuts that I'll be attaching there. Same story here. And on this guy as well, you can see I got my little, my bolts showing through there so we can bolt this up. So I'm gonna drop it down, paint it one last time. And then after lunch, we're going in. All right, Charlie's back. Got the Charlies together again. Um, so we have one last custom thing that we have to do before we can mount this tank. And that is because of the, this is a freshwater tank and because of the way it goes in the van, we can't use our normal fill valve. Normally we would mount like a little stainless doodad where you stick the hose in and fill it up. Um, there's not room for that on this build. So we're putting in kind of like a hidden <laughs> fill valve. It'll be basically like underneath the van, <laughs> kind of behind the tire. You'll be getting in there. Yeah. Uh, so what we're gonna be doing is installing on the back of the tank. Now these plastic tanks, they come with fittings on them. And a lot of times you can make them work for you. But if you can't, you need to have a fitting spin welded onto it. And we actually have the tools to do that. So we can add a inch and a half threaded port to the back of the tank, just like they do at the tank factory. And to do that, you'll need a hole saw that's the right size, which I have. And then you'll need a very high powered router. This is a Makita 3612, one of our favorites around here. We've got two of them. And then you need these special fittings that you use to spin your, fr your friction welded, spin welded fitting up and it spins so fast that it actually makes so much friction that it welds on to the tank and creates a watertight seal. So I'm going to show you what that looks like. Um, and if you really get a kick out of this, I know uh, Regretless, when she was in town, she got some good shots of me doing this too. So you can just have your fill, go find that build video with her. But um, yeah, check this out. It's pretty interesting. Okay, so the first thing that you wanna do is mark your location. I don't know if you can see, I got my little circle there. And then you wanna use a hole saw bit and we have a set, I don't know if you can see, tank only. Uh, hole saw bits have a tendency to get used and abused around here. So we have a special set just for these. But this is the same diameter as what you need to fit on the inside flange of your fitting. So we're gonna drill the hole, try to keep it as clean and keep as many shavings as we can out of the inside of the tank. We'll get the fitting on there, spin it up, and this whole thing will be done in about two or three minutes. Mm -hmm. Whoa. So we take our fitting and you can see the inside of this um, uh, router bit here, the fitting has splines on it that go into uh, grooved sections here. So it actually slots in and now it is permanently, or not permanently, but it's engaged with the router. And the trick to this whole process, so we'll set that in here like this. The trick to this whole process is you kind of got to stick it out longer than you think you should. Um, it's going to get smoky and kind of intense. 
and you just got to ride it out until you see it melt and get really nice all around it. So, and this might fling a little bit of plastic, so, so watch out. <laughs> and I'll bring in here and show you what you got. So you can see the puddle of the glistening plastic that's going to cool off and it's going to turn this uh, dull color, but already it's, you know, it's locked in there. And if you look kind of take and remember how that looks around the sides there, we'll look at the other side and you can see that's exactly how they weld these on. You can see the same goop all around it. So we'll get our hole saw and we'll knock out those plugs. And uh, this will be ready to install on the tray. We've got our heat pad in place. We just got to stick it down and this will be ready to go up under the van. All right, it's time to install the tank into our tray. But before we do that, we got to stick on this heater pad. This one is made by a company called Falcon. I think it's how you say it. And if I recall, I think this is good for up to like a 60 gallon tank. Um, so this is only, I think 20 gallons. So we should be looking pretty good there. Uh, I went ahead and put some split loom for chafe protection on the wires where they come out of there. And um, we're not gonna actually stick this to the tank because it's gonna be fully captured. That way if you ever need to service it or whatever, um, it saves you the mess and the headache of that. So we'll set it in here. I'm going to grab this tank and we'll put it in. That was easy. So we got our wires coming out. The tank is nice and seated in there and the wires are protected from chafing by that split loom. So we're going to stick this under the bus. And I think I'm going to have Charlie help me lift it up and hopefully we can just stick the bolts through there's a chance that we might need to um, enlarge some of the holes on the brackets because of the thickness of the heater pad changing the alignment, but this tank's going up. So here you can see those counter board holes I made with the bolts attached, bolting it to the, the frame here. And then same story on this side. And the nice thing about the counter bore, these heads now, they won't hit our tank. So we've got our, our drop here, a drop here, and then two more drops. And those will catch the tabs on the tank. Me and Charlie are gonna grab the, hank, the tank and hoist it up into here. Get the parking up. Of course, it did but it was up there. Yeah. 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 Right. 
No, it's 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 all right, well, I skipped a few steps on you, and I'm sorry, but we kind of got in the mode of just hooking up all the plumbing and stuff. And, um, well, this is a video about how to mount a gray water tank, not plumbing or electrical. But nonetheless, I'm gonna take you under there, show you what it looks like right now, and uh, show you how we solved the plumbing issues. And um, we're about probably two minutes away from grabbing the hose and filling it up and seeing well, seeing if we get a call today at 5.15 or if uh, we gotta keep working. So, let's take a look. This turned out awesome. I mean, you can't even see the tank until you're way down under here. Really didn't cost these folks hardly any um, ground clearance. So this white wire here is our power that's gonna get hooked up to those wires for the tank heater. But uh, we've got our pickup that goes up to the pump in our insulated uh, half inch line right there. And then uh, that coil, that's actually how we do a vent thing. Um, the coil helps keep stuff from getting into the tank, like bugs and whatever. And I think Charlie's gonna stuff some steel wool or something in that pipe to help hold it up more. But all in all, uh, super clean install. And now the fill, we had to do something a little creative, but yeah, uh, that's actually the fill for the fresh water. And there's a valve on it and a cap to keep it clean. Uh, we had to get innovative, but I think it's pretty good. Gosh, I want a good moment here. I mean, it's just going, it's just working. Okay. Oh my God, it's working like a charm. Wow, okay. Nice. <laughs> Sweet. Well, that's a happy ending to a project that was honestly not too bad. This is fantastic. Well, job well done on all parties and I think Ben's just getting the extra credit with the split loom on the bottom. Okay, well that's gonna do it for this job. It went about as smooth as you could ask for. And uh, even got a couple stickers out of the deal. And I think Charlie is happy with the results. Look, there he is. Very, couldn't have came out any better. Very happy. <laughs> yeah. So uh, thanks for watching this video. I hope it was helpful to you. I know things got complicated there at the end, but well, that's just the way it goes when you're trying to put a tank under a van. So they got 20 gallons of water. It's time to go home. Thanks for watching. See you next time. <laughs>